Was there anything really in that announcement yesterday? Many of us would be thinking there was going to be another rabbit from the hat because we'd already had the TP Lash Insurance announcement confirmed by the Treasury. Highly unusually, by the way. MPs are supposed to hear that first on the floor of the House. Um, not sure the Speaker would have been happy about that. But, I mean, was there anything there that said, wow, you know, things are going to get so much better under the Tories? I know the T Labour Party are 20, even 27 points ahead in some polls, but don't worry, we're on track. Growth is coming, inflation's coming down. Everything's going to be better. You're going to feel richer. When we all know it's the economy, stupid, and people are looking at their, their paychecks, they're looking at their outgoings on their rent, their mortgage, what they're spending at the supermarket, filling up the car, buying anything at all, and they're going, I am now poorer than I used to be. Who's in charge? The Tories. Well, I want them out. And, of course, all those criticisms are fair. And, no, there wasn't any great announcement that makes people think that they're going to be hugely better off next year. Inflation is coming down. That's absolutely true. Interest rates seem to be stabilising. Those are both good things. But I think we've got to be honest on both sides of the political divide about the economic problems facing our country, which are not necessarily the result of any one particular party, although they are partly to do with economic management over the last 40 years. But the elephant in the room is the demographic changes that this country and all Western countries countries are going through. We have an ageing population and the biggest expenditure uh, to do with that is on things like pensions and healthcare and yet our number of young people going in the work, into the workforce is going down and down. So when I was born, when you were born, uh, we had a ratio of working people to pensioners of about four to one. That's now gone down in our lifetime to three to one and by the end of our lifetime that will be two to one. So in other words, by the end of our lifetime, working people will have to contribute double in tax and national insurance than they were at the beginning of our lifetime. That is the mathematical reality of an ageing society. No government can solve that, or certainly not within five years. And that is the, the problem that every single Western country is facing. The problem is the tax base is shrinking and the amount of tax we need to spend is rising. Yeah. That is no, an insolvable I, I, problem I, I can, by a few tweets. I completely concur with all that analysis and we would cover on the show quite regularly, actually. These are the really big issues that people are not thinking about and governments are not, are not dealing with long term. I have to say, if you made it easier, if people, people didn't leave the university with a load of debt, people found it easier yeah. to get on the housing ladder so people felt they could settle down, they could have kids. Most people who don't have kids wanted to have kids. Women could start earlier. Made all of those yeah. things easier. Instead of just importing more, more people from abroad, which seems to be the government's solution, we might find that we'd solve that. But you, you mentioned in terms of the elderly population and obviously the impact on healthcare, huge cost. And we've seen even in austerity years, it was healthcare that, you know, always had a real terms increase, if not as much as it used to be. Um, but yesterday, the Chancellor announced an extra six billion for the NHS. He also had this to say, and I'd love to hear your thoughts in just a couple of moments. What did he say yesterday? I have three gorgeous children the oldest of whom has been patiently listening in the gallery. The NHS is rightly the biggest reason most of us are proud to be British. I, I thought that was quite one of the most bizarre things I've ever heard. The, the NHS is not just the biggest reason most of us are proud to be British, but rightly. Do you agree? Oh, I don't fully agree with that. I have to say, it was wonderful seeing his son sitting up there in the gallery. He behaved beautifully. I, he I was, been at uh, it was it was wonderful to see. Uh, but no, I don't. I mean, you know, people are of course rightly um, grateful for the healthcare they receive. You know, huge numbers of our doctors and nurses providing brilliant care every single day. But no, I don't think the NHS is is the the reason we're proud to be British. Although I do think we've seen a shift in attitude since before the pandemic because people have become more aware of the challenges facing the NHS and and some of the failings. Um, um, and I think people are a bit more um, hesitant now before praising it unconditionally. Um, but there's no doubt the NHS is a brilliant thing, but it does face this extreme challenge of funding, partly to do with the ageing society, as we've already discussed. But also, this is the way with modern medicine. The more cures you discover, the more drugs you invent, the more surgeries you're capable of doing, the more you then need to spend to yeah. offer these treatments. And we do need to have an honest conversation about what is the overall size of the healthcare budget that we're willing to spend? Okay. How are we willing to fund that? How, uh, how many interventions do we want the government to make on things like obesity and smoking? These are important philosophical questions that we need to solve, otherwise the budget is just going to get out of control. Okay, I'm, I'm just fascinated. I'm stuck on the word grateful. I'm always fascinated by this. I've had a number of bits of you know, I, you know, healthcare over the years, and I, times when I've sent thank you cards for people being particularly kind after being treated for miscarriages, and I just felt the staff really went above and beyond in terms of their, their, their sort of empathy. Um, but I'm not grateful for, for a service 
which I pay for through my taxes. In the same way, when I walk down my street at night and there are street lights on, I don't think, oh, I am so grateful for street lighting. When my bins are collected occasionally, um, I don't think, oh, I'm so grateful. I think, yes, I pay for that service. I expect that service to happen. That doesn't mean I don't say, oh, thank you when I see the bin men. Or, you know, in the same way, I say thank you to a waiter. Uh, for bringing my food. That's just good manners. But we shouldn't be grateful for a service that ev pretty much every Western nation provides to all of their uh, all of the people. We're told it's free. It's not free. It's free at the point of demand. We all pay for it. Why should we be grateful? Why are we still treating the NHS as if it is this sacred cow? I think there's a difference, isn't there, between uh, being grateful for a service that we pay for. Yes, perhaps grateful is the wrong word to use. As you say, are we grateful for the streetlights? No, we pay for it. But of course, when there's a, a human element involved and when you've received um, empathetic care, sometimes in a time of great anxiety or great trauma or great need, of course, it's a natural and desirable human reaction to be grateful to somebody who reaches out to you. But that's not the same as being very, very, even grateful if to the NHS. Right, we, just need to, we need to separate. And of course, people have got some very yeah. um, strong memories and loyalty to people within the NHS. And I think we yeah. should absolutely celebrate that. But yes, okay. you're right. In terms of the service as a whole, we do pay for it. But I think, you know, the part of the problem is that it's free at the point of delivery. And so people don't understand how much it's costing. Yeah. Um, people complain about paying for dental treatment, for example. Uh, but I personally support that because I think as long as it, you know, the, the right people get free dental treatment, of course, because it, 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 we need to understand that these things are not free and that they cost and they cannot be wasted. Okay, we'll have to. And so that's there. why I think we just need a reassessment of the whole model. Miriam, thank you very much. Always good to talk to you, Miriam Kate, Secretary of P, co-chair of the New Conservatives. Thank you.